Again, my name is Mark Warner. I'm the Assistant Director for Planning, Miami Dade County. And um, so I'm not going to bore you with a bunch of slides, so you're lucky. We've only got three today. And I'm going to try to give you, uh, you know, as much of a snapshot of, of these proposals as I can and based upon uh, what's been filed with uh, Miami Dade County. Just in terms of uh, locational reference and geography, uh, both of these applications are adjacent to one another. They're up in the northwest corner of the county. The, um, third bike is obviously here. I-75 is here. And Miami Gardens uh, interchange up there at northwest 186th Street with I-75. Sort of gives you the idea of where we are in the county. And obviously, just to the north is the Broward County, uh, Miami Dade County line, just to the north of that, the city of Miramar. Over to the east would be the city of Miami Lakes, town of Miami Lakes, around the city of Hialeah, and a piece of Hialeah Gardens uh, over here. <coughs> Further to the east would be the uh, city of Miami Gardens. Back in uh, November of 2015, both uh, the American Dream folks, which also go, go by the name of International Atlantic LLC, and the Graham companies filed separate comprehensive plan amendments to the county's comprehensive development master plan. We have two cycles in Miami-Dade County to file such applications, whether they're small scale or standard, and those are in May and November. But actually, <clears throat> our discussions with the applicant go back way prior to the time that they filed. In fact, going back to probably last summer or before, we had been in discussions, in particular with American Dream Miami and what they were proposing. And some of our discussions with uh, the applicant at that time concerned how is this application going to be reviewed and how it might be different than a normal CDMP amendment in Miami-Dade County that we get that aren't as large or are not as intense in development as either one of these are. We discussed with the applicant and with Isabel here at the Regional Council we discussed looking at these applications as if they were developments of regional impact, although we know that they don't qualify anymore uh, for, that, for that process. But if there were any applications that had regional potential regional impact, especially so close to the jurisdictional line of Miami-Dade and Broward County, this would meet that criteria and that definition. So we believe, staff believed, it was important to engage the stakeholders, at least from the local jurisdictions of the surrounding <coughs> municipalities, Broward County in particular as well, Miramar, and anybody else that may have, uh, you know, be impacted uh, by the uh, by the development of, of this size and nature. So actually, prior to them filing in November of 2015, we had at least, I believe, Isabel, two regional meetings here with stakeholders simply to talk about transportation, not even all of the other issues, but in particular, transportation, because we knew that that was going to be of a particular concern to everybody, including Miami-Dade County, uh, but particularly for the surrounding jurisdictions. This is an area that has, while it has good access from both the interstate and from the turnpike, or at least it's at the junction of where those two are, there may be and will be probably other improvements that need to be made uh, in the area. And we wanted to make sure that as we went through and reviewed the impacts that everybody was involved in that process. And that included both the turnpike uh, FDOT District 4 and 6, the Miami uh, Expressway Authority, uh, the Public Works Departments of all of the, all of the jurisdictions involved as well. So 
Um, I'm glad two of our two of the people that I've been working with closely here are here today from District 4 and 6. And what makes that different <coughs> is that typically in a comp plan amendment uh, process for any local jurisdiction, most of the reviewing agencies, the state agencies, <coughs> don't even get involved until after an application has been transmitted by the local government for a uh, for a transmittal review. So in this case, we've been working ahead of the curve so that most of our, our state and regional partners are also involved in the process ahead of time. Um, and I think that's been very advantageous because in terms of transportation of lease, um, when the applicant did file their application in the month of November and subsequently their transportation analysis, uh, we had already had meetings regarding trip generation, regarding the distribution and assignment of traffic, and as a result, um, you know, we did get a traffic impact study ahead of time normally than what we would usually get, actually. Um, so we, we've had that advantage of being able to do that. It is our intent, as I will explain as to where we are with the projects today, uh, our intent, Miami-Dade County's intent to continue to work with all of the stakeholders and jurisdictions as if this were a DRI, even though it's not. Just briefly, the development programs involving both, both sites and both applications, the American Dream Miami, you're roughly talking about 6.2 million square feet here of development that's split between retail and entertainment and a 2,000 room hotel. That's approximately on 195 gross acres. The current CDMP or our comp plan land use for this area is a designated industrial and office. It is inside the UDB. The turnpike itself forms the outer edge of our urban development boundary uh, at this location. In fact, this property as well as the property in the city of Hialeah to the south, south of 170th Street, was brought into the UDB back in the 2005-2006 amendment cycle. The proposed designation on the property to allow the commercial and the entertainment uses is business and office. <coughs> that is a category that allows those types of uses. For the Graham Company's property, again, we're talking, in, in this case, we're talking about a, a 2,000 uh, family, multifamily rental dwelling units, over a million square feet of commercial, three million square feet of a business park or in light industrial type uses on the site, as well as uh, two different hotels, of which uh, together would probably produce about 1,600 hotel rooms in that area. This is 339 gross acres on their property, and again, their property, like the American Dream property, is currently designated industrial and office, and they are asking for a designation of business office slash employment center. In terms of a build-out time frame, what we've been told and what we've seen in their initial application for American Dream is that, <clears throat> is that this property would have a build-out approximately 2019-2020, depending on how soon and how quickly their application and subsequent zoning would, would be approved. They're uh, projecting approximately 30 million visitors to the American Dream uh, complex, 14,000 or plus permanent uh, employees at build-out. In terms of Graham properties, we're talking a much longer term build-out, probably beyond 2030, 2030 to 2040. <coughs> with very little development occurring prior to 2020 on the site. And again, they're looking at approximately, at least in their documentation, over 10,000 employees. So let me just very briefly tell you where we're at in the process. The applicants had originally filed, as I indicated, in the November 2015 amendment cycle. They have requested in mid-March 
to move their application to the May 2016 cycle. If they had been on the November cycle, they would have already have had staff's recommendation. They also would have already have had, at this point, a community council meeting. In Miami-Dade County, applications, whether they're small scale or standard, have three public hearings. One by the local affected community council, as we call them, um, which are elected officials, and they make recommendations on all CDMP applications to the county commission. Our planning advisory board uh, would be having an April hearing on this application for this cycle, for the November cycle. They are our local planning agency, so again, they fulfill a recommend, uh, a recommending role to the Board of County Commissioners. And then the Board of County Commissioners would have had a transmittal hearing in May. So what this does is <coughs> having this application now in the May cycle sets off a new schedule. So, and, and we haven't we haven't come up with that specific schedule yet for the May cycle, but typically our May cycle would not have the staff rec uh, you know, producing the staff recommendation until August. And we wouldn't begin to have public hearings until September. So in terms of the council, uh, you probably wouldn't see this if both applications were transmitted, or one or the other, you probably wouldn't see it until December, January. That is a, you know, that is a proposed schedule. Uh, it may, uh, because they have already applied, because they have already submitted a lot of data, and all, you know, we're trying to, well, we're going to be looking at that schedule. It may occur a little quicker than, than what I just indicated. Um, so that's, you know, that's where we're at at this point. So it is not imminently coming to the council anytime soon itself. It gives staff the time to uh, work with both applicants on their application still, particularly the transportation. Uh, the transportation analysis was simply not ready uh, for the upcoming community council meetings that were going to happen in March. And in fact, they've indicated that the, from that point in mid-March, they needed another 30 to 60 days to complete their, their transportation analysis. Again, of which we would all be reviewing, including District 4 and 6, even at this point uh, in the process. So um, in a nutshell, that's where we're at. If you have any questions, I would be sure. happy sure to answer any questions today. Um, we're, like that, it's going to be Right. May I ask quickly about one thing? You, you said um, you are looking at this as if it's a BRI. Am I right in my understanding that it is a BRI? It's just the fact that the uh, amendments to the Growth Management Act removed BRI review, that this is a BRI? It removed and Sam can, can jump in. He's as familiar with Chapter 380 as anybody. You know, it's my understanding that after amendments that were made last year in the legislature,